You All ready? Right. Yeah, bro. What's up, Guns Out Range Day 2023? What's the podcast, John? This is the Go Beyond Podcast Range Day Special. Let's go. Wow. And get you some. Ugly, <laughs> wow. You ugly. What's up, Guns Out Range Day 2023? This is the Go Beyond Podcast Range Day Special. It is a special, John. It is it's special. A, it's the yeah. second annual Guns Out Range Day yeah. right here at XCAL in Loudoun County, Virginia, and the turnout has been impressive. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Completely humbled yet again. Last year, yeah. I mean, we, we did numbers that we didn't expect, and it was, it, I, I, it's safe to say it was eclipsed today. I, I mean, oh, no doubt about say. it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we've maintained the same consistent number since, what, since 8 a.m.? Since, since we started. Since we started. And that's a, because we did see it wane last we range did. day. We did. I remember but, that. But, you know, I think people know to stick around for the uh For the, for the giveaway, for the giveaway. Everybody oh, wants to win which, something for the giveaway. Speaking of which, if you are listening to these speakers, the giveaway is happening right after the last podcast. So that's another incentive for you to kind of, like, hang out and, and don't make sure you pay attention. Guys. Because, because once they we start calling them here. Yeah, once we start calling them names, if you're not here, we're gonna give you a, a, a good three count. And John, what are we giving away? We got oh some good God. stuff. We're giving away rifle racks, we're giving away uh grizzly ears, we're giving away a Fos Tech rifle, we're giving away a BRN 180 kit. Um we got raffles with 24 karat gold glocks and syndicus AKs. You really gonna give that one away? I have to, unfortunately. <laughs> I have to. I'm a man of I didn't order. know if you were going to be able to let it go. Hey John. man, I, I listen, man. I'm the king of let go. I like that. The king of let go. You king better let, let it go. go. You, you gotta let it go. Song? But you know what? But, but you know what? I also the king of. What's that? Get it back. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> Get some. So we we do range days all across the country. Um, we are we'll partake in other range days. And I met this this young man at the primary arms range day maybe like two years ago. Wow, it's um, been that long. It's, it's been a, it's been a while. Um, his name is Tyler Jamal. He is a he is an author, a barber, a father. A competition shooter and 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 starting to be a very consistent content creator yep Tyler Jamal is a phenomenal human being and he has a very interesting story and mindset as it pertains to firearms so I think that's why it's important that we have him on the show Tyler thank you for joining welcome us. to the show bro thank you thank you thank you I appreciate that both yeah make sure you make sure you talk, talk in right? the mic oh, talk right in the, the mic, mic. Yeah, talk, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't don't be afraid to don't be shy no, man. Don't, it's not, not gonna you, hurt you, you can put your lips on it <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not gonna go that far. I'm just saying that's what Dan, that's what Daniel told me. Daniel, that's what you told me, right, Daniel? Daniel that's what Daniel told me. Now, I mean, so Tyler, okay. we appreciate you for coming out, mm -hmm. bro. And you've had quite the fascinating journey yes. into firearms. You're an author. Mm -hmm. I actually ordered the book. I did, John. Did you order the book? I have the book. Did you yes, read the book? I, I, I'm halfway through the book. I read the book. Um, you know, I, I think oftentimes when we think about people who have sort of gone through some of the things you've gone through. Mm -hmm most of society typically writes those people off. Right. Yeah. And you have been a prime example that second chance is not only is a thing, but it should be a thing. Absolutely. And so I want to give you an opportunity to just tell the audience a little bit about your background and what sort of helped guide you to where you are now. Because it's an amazing story. Yes, it Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Yep. So first of all, I just want to say thank you to both John and Shermichael for this opportunity to be here with you guys and to be uh, able to share a lot about my life and my story. Um, and I, I do think I, uh, I have an important story for the world to hear, yeah. um, especially when it pertains to guns and gun ownership and just everything that surrounded this community. So um, I'm from Sanford, North Carolina. Just a few simple things about myself. I'm from Sanford, North Carolina. Uh, I came up within a, a torn family, mm -hmm. uh, a, a dysfunctional household in a dysfunctional neighborhood and things of that nature. Talk more to it. Um, and so I came in from uh, those type of environments where you had a lot of prison, you mm -hmm. had a lot of drugs, you had a lot of um, detrimental things that will only lead to a, a lifestyle of destruction. You know, nothing that's really going to elevate or benefit anybody. That's that sound. No, you're fine. Go okay. ahead. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, so I grew coming from that background, um, by the age of 15, I found myself involved in some things where... I was facing some very serious charges, those being uh, a first degree murder charge and mm -hmm. attempted armed robbery uh, for something that I didn't do. And uh, during that time when I was incarcerated and I had an opportunity to actually meet God and he proposed a plan for me that he mm -hmm. had for me and that was my second chance in life. And so I pretty much made everything purposeful ever since that day and that was when I was 15 years old and I'm, I'm 31 now and by the grace of God I'm doing all these things that I'm able to do 
uh, including competition shooting, but more so just having my family. That's definitely the biggest and most important thing, uh, being able to travel the world. I served in the military for seven years. And uh, just being able to have the freedom of life mm -hmm. is very um, underappreciated, I know. Yeah. And uh, it's just one of those major things that's very huge, and I'm just very thankful for it. Absolutely. That's, that's interesting. I, I love the way you said the appreciation for the freedom of life. Right. And, you know, unfortunately, that's, that's kind of human nature that it's like you take things for granted, right, until you, until you either lose it or are at risk of losing it, right? Absolutely. And, and, and I got to be honest, as it pertains to my story, you know, becoming a gun owner, mm. that's, that's kind of how I felt. That's what right. pushed me to become a gun owner. I was, I mean, 12 years in the Marine Corps, never owned a gun. But then in 2020, when lockdown was happening and I didn't know if there was going to be another opportunity for me to purchase a firearm or when that would be, I, it, it kind of jarred me into right. action, right? right. And so, so I'm hearing you say the same thing about your experience mm -hmm. with, with incarceration. And, and that's powerful, man. That's very powerful. I'm definitely very thankful, you know. And so events like these, I'm just happy to be a part of, to be present, to have an opportunity to get in front of uh, others and to be able to share my story because, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a very thankful, once again, it's just a very thankful feeling to be out here doing a purposeful thing, living on purpose, being able to shoot these guns, being able to inspire so many people. Yeah. And especially a lot of people who come from the backgrounds that I came from. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, um, I believe they deal with limited belief systems where they don't really see a lot of value in themselves or yeah. what they can really get out of life or even understand that there's so much more to life than just our neighborhoods and our communities and what's right in front of us. So I'm thankful to be able to live a life where I get to travel, I get to do these things, and especially guns because so many people love them, you yeah. know, and, and if we leave it to Hollywood and, you know, the music industry to really represent gun ownership, yeah. then it'll be doing us a very detrimental thing. And so I want to just be the change that I want to see by getting out there, being active, creating content, fun, engaging, good content, shooting guns and inspiring others. And that's exactly what's been happening. And I'm, uh, I'm just a very thankful man because of it. What do you think about people who have sort of had your beginning mm -hmm. and people will look at individuals with that background and uncharacteristically just dismiss them? Right. What, what would you want for those people to understand about not only giving them a second hand, but also giving them a hand up? Right. Um, you know, some people have their mind made up, you know, mm -hmm. and some people, if that's how they feel, that's just how they're going to feel. Uh, but when you come from, you know, backgrounds like mine and you, you had you had a second chance at life, you really just got to show better than you can tell. You know, I, I, I think that's a good point. And second chances are, are important. And understanding that everyone is going to have a different beginning is important. If you look at your journey and the experiences, would you have expected you would have carved this course? Or were there very specific things that you had to do to carve this course? Because that I, might be helpful for someone listening. They're right. like, you know, I'm trying to figure it out, mm. but I don't quite know how. Absolutely. So, you know, it's just been going just one day at a time type of thing. I didn't really have a plan or a layout or even knew what I wanted to be doing as far as this gun stuff is concerned. Mm -hmm. But getting out into this community, and like John said, we met two years ago, Primary Arms, you know, and just meeting like-minded individuals like you guys and being around events like these just helped push it forward as far as educating and um, being able to just enlighten about different things that's out there from guns to equipment to training to competition shooting to just everything that's so involved with the two-way in this community and culture. Uh, being able to go to events like this helped push me forward as well, but it's really just that desire, you know, that desire and that passion because I love guns, I love to shoot, and so I would just get out there every day and just by doing what I love and living on purpose, it's really just ushered me where I am today. You know, when I first met you, Tyler, and we, mm -hmm. we did that first interview, you said that sh shooting guns to you was a, was a therapeutic experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and that stuck with me. Yes. And, and so can you elaborate what that means to you for, for our listeners out there? Um, how, how shooting firearms for you is therapeutic and potentially can be therapeutic for others? Absolutely. So one thing I know us as human beings, we all have in common is that we all face trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody is exempt from that. Yeah. And people deal with that type of pain and trauma differently. So we know that depression is a real thing, anxiety. You know, we have mental issues in this country and things of that nature. And so 
shooting guns for me is my release. It, and I know it could possibly be the release for a lot of other individuals as well. Mm -hmm. But my biggest encouragement would just find whatever that release is, find whatever your purpose is so that you can really start to enjoy your life better because life is really worth living. And so by shooting guns, it really was a dark time in my life whenever I made that statement to you. Mm. I was coming out of one. Wow. And um, it was because I had an opportunity to work at a gun range. It kind of felt like my life got flipped upside down. I got out the military. I didn't have a lot of stuff going on. That transition was rough, and the only yeah. thing that was really offering me a job was just this local gun range mm -hmm. to just watch people shoot and be safe. Right. And so uh, I took that opportunity, and that actually gave me an opportunity to shoot more and to be around guns more, and I found myself just really feeling a lot better. You know, that, that cloud was really starting to move away, mm -hmm. and it was just because I was doing the things that I love and I was passionate about. Right. And so one of my biggest encouragements is whatever that thing is, you know, to just encourage an individual to get out there and get after it, you know, and just definitely go make it happen because um, life is worth living. And for me, guns is... Uh, that is definitely my release. That's my therapy. You know, that, I mean, John, that's a really good question because when you think about the therapeutic component and aspect of, of firearms, mm -hmm. I would imagine one would have to be at a certain mental place yeah. to find it therapeutic, <laughs> right. Right? Right? Right. right? Because you can't Absolutely. be angry right? because we see what, what that leads to. So yeah. at what point in your journey did you say, okay, I am now at a place where I, where I can find the therapeutic components of this versus using it as a vice for negative things, which you easily could have done right, if you would have right. went in a different direction. Absolutely. So it was, um, it was, it was like when I first started working at the range. Um, so the range really was like the catalyst for you. It was because that also helped, you know, um, it helped push forward the social media aspect of everything that I'm doing too. Because I was there, I was able to pull my phone out more and record myself and start shooting more. And it really just started opening doors. One thing led to the next. Next thing you know, I went to my very first, um, it was in Ohio. They called it Ohio Range Day. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And I, that, I went to the very first one. And, uh, you know, that was that was definitely new for me because I'd never been to any event like that. And then from there, I went out to California and did some training and shooting. And it was just, it really just took off. And then that's when I realized this, uh, this is a whole world out here mm -hmm. with this the gun industry and the shooting and everything. And that's really what just, you know, it... It was already therapeutic, but when I started to see more of the impact mm -hmm. coming from it, it brought on a new level of being more therapeutic and knowing that it's, it's more purposeful and that it's actually helping people and that others are being inspired. That really helps out a lot as well, too. So, so within your peer group and your family and friends, mm -hmm. how, is, how is your, I guess... Uh, the feelings that you have and the mindset that you have in regards to firearms, mm. how, how is that received within your peer group, within your friends and your family? Oh, yeah. Everybody, everybody's all eyes now. You know, everybody's <laughs> all eyes. They see how much the social media has taken off. They seen the modeling that came with Magpul and that my face was all over the That's country. A that, that too, a That's a great shot, too, man. That's a great picture, I appreciate man. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah you, for yeah. sure. Um, but that was huge, you know, and so that really opened up a lot of people. And that's another thing that I said, you know, just getting out there putting myself out there the doors that were open because mm -hmm. you know being able to model with magpool now put my face in front of so many more people right and um you know it's just it's it's, it's a blessing and uh initially you know people probably they were looking but they wasn't too concerned but now they see how much impact is coming from it how mm -hmm. much of a following is starting to come from it and they really are uh tuned in and i got a lot of people now they just they want to shoot. They want to shoot. A lot of people come up to me, and they know me before I would even know them. You know, that's that's very cool and everything. But um, I definitely want to continue to push the culture forward. You know, I want to continue to be of service and to be able to help people and give back and, you know, just continue to do kind of the stuff that we're doing today. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's pivot. I mean, you're talking about the Magpul cover. You're talking about social media blowing up. Mm -hmm. For people who are just now getting into this, right. how do you turn this into a business? Because I feel like, John, that's one of the biggest questions oh, yeah. that a lot that of people struggle with trying mm -hmm. to figure out. What advice would you give to those who are in this space saying, I know I want to do this. I want to generate revenue, but right. it's not exactly easy. There isn't like a road map exactly. nope, that's sort of pre-written mm -hmm. to say if you do X, Y, and Z things, right. you'll make money. Right. So I would say when you get involved into this world into this industry and if you really love it and you're passionate about it you'll start to pick up on things and you might start to notice things or 
you might get ideas of your own and that's when if you want to capitalize off it in a business aspect that's the perfect opportunity to try to think of what can I create how can I be of service what can I give back that I can put my name on because I feel this belongs in the gun world and it's in the gun community and that's why I created my company liberating methods and I um and everything that we're about from competition shooting to training to gun safety it's really just wanting to usher people into this lifestyle yeah uh, in, a, in a very good, fun, safe, and energetic way, mm -hmm. and also encouraging people to actually go out to the range and shoot and train and to, to better themselves. And from that point on, you know, if the passion is there, if the love is there, then I'm pretty sure the ideas will be there too. And, you know, as with anything, you know, an individual should definitely take hold of a good idea when they get one, especially if they want to make a business model out there. Right. And when you think about the principle of the more you serve, the more successful you're going to be, right? Right. And you, and you work that backwards. Mm -hmm. I think that's where you're at. And, and that's I feel like that's where we have been from the yeah. start. Mm -hmm. Because, because Sherm, you know, like when we started this, I was very hesitant about taking this to YouTube or, or, or making a show yeah, out of it. especially after the whole TV well, debacle. Well, before that, or though, even before, even the before TV? that, because remember, I didn't want to dampen my experience. I was still having the experience well, of new true. gun ownership, that's true. right? Well, that's true, yeah. And, that's true. And so I was like, I don't want to interfere with that. I'm really enjoying this. This is kind of like blowing my mind as far as how uh, immersive it is and how, how much I wanted to immerse myself in it. And I thought that this was going to kind of handicap that experience. Yeah. But, but then, you know, it really I was, exploded though, right? Oh, this, say what now? It exploded oh, the experience. It, it, absolutely. Like because because what, what happened is, and what, what, actually made me change my thought process on that was when my friends and family told me they were like watching you do this and be and become this new person with the firearms and, and how seriously you've taken it so fast is fascinating to see and then my friends and family started to follow suit so then they were like you're really changing our hearts and minds because this wasn't on our radar before you started doing this. Mm -hmm. So there's other mm -hmm. people out there like you that that's, that's struggling with it or indifferent, and maybe they just need to know, and through your experience and watching what you're doing, mm -hmm. you may actually turn the tide in some way. Absolutely. And so, and, and then when we had our conversation, Sherm, about the politics of it all, oh, yeah. and, and <laughs> everything that's going on in the Second Amendment community and the importance of it, I was sold at that point. And then it was just bringing you something that you thought was kind of like TV worthy. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. And then we and were then off we, the race. And we were off. Yeah. No, you know, I mean, Tyler, that, that's a good point because everyone sort of has a, a, a very interesting trajectory in terms of success in this space. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of parallels, John. Yeah, a lot. I mean, there, a lot. There, there are a lot. It's almost like there are some things you sort of have to do, certain people you sort of have to work oh, with to sort absolutely. of earn that level of credibility. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, what, like, what was that like for you? I mean, were there certain people you was like, okay, I, I really kind of need to be on this person's channel or I, or I need to work with this particular industry right. because doing so will give me credit? Absolutely. So the more you learn, when I first got into it, it was just, you know, as simple as going to the range, hitting the range, shooting, and that would be it. But then I started going <laughs> to classes, I started going to competitions, and then I started going to events like SHOT Show yep. and yep. Uh, NRA um, convention and things of that nature where mm -hmm. you have, as a whole, every industry, every company within this industry there. And then that's when I understood, okay, I needed to be more business minded. And that's why I created Liberating Methods so that I can go talk to these companies, let them know what I'm about, mm -hmm. and hopefully in return, they'd be willing to want to work with me so that we can partner and just continue to extend reach and be of, be of purpose and be of impact. And so, um, yeah, SHOT Show and events like this, just like what you guys have going on mm -hmm. right now, you have mm -hmm. all these vendors out here, this is a perfect opportunity for anybody who might be wanting to come up in the same way. These are the events you want to come to because this gives you an opportunity to meet face to face, and that's the type of human I am. I, I love face to face interaction instead Absolutely. of a text yeah. or a call or anything like mm -hmm. that. And so when you can actually get face to face and you can meet people face to face, they can really see you for who you are and vice versa. I mean, John, you know what's interesting about this? Mm. There's been a huge, like, almost like a combustion engine, a rush of black people in particular mm -hmm. buying firearms. Yes. Why do you think that is? You know, Sharon, that, that question. Everyone's puzzled by that, by the way, Tyler. And, and, people and, are trying and, to figure out where did this come from and is mm -hmm. it sustainable? But here we are, what, four years in and the numbers remain. Yeah, it's, it's tough, Sherm. I got to be honest with you because I, I would like to say that there's a lot of black people that felt the same way that I felt because of the time. Because, I, I mean, Sherm, I want to say the vast majority of every new gun owner that I've spoken to literally either made the decision to buy their gun around the 2020 mark 
yep. are, are, are bought at the 2020 mark, right? So, so it's one or the other. 2020 was definitely something that changed people's mindset about owning a firearm. Mm -hmm. And now, now it, you know, it varies from person to person how long it took them to pull that trigger. <laughs> Pun intended, <laughs> but 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 seriously, that, that was I think a, a really really strong turning point. I mean, there was a crescendo there of just the right amount of uh, police brutality, just the right amount of civil unrest, just the right amount of isolation yeah. going yeah. on. I mean, it was really a, a, a melting pot of circumstances that made it just the right time. You know, I mean, Tyler, jump jump in on this. I mean, you, you train people. You, have you seen a lot of people from our community saying, you know, man, I, I want to get a gun. Absolutely. Like, I, I need you to train me or where where do I go? Like, have you seen that yes. explosion, especially yes. starting during the COVID pandemic? Absolutely. Um, a thousand percent. And just like what John was saying, from so many things around the 2020 mark and so many other factors that played a part into basically making black people understand that we are our own first defense mm -hmm. and that this is a responsibility we will have to take up for ourselves because mm -hmm. no one is going to be coming to save us you know and so with the whole political climate and like you had mentioned with police brutality and you know those instances that happen um i know that probably put a fire behind a lot of black gun owners to want to go get firearms as well and uh you know it it, it ultimately it's a good thing because at the end of the day, this is what we want. We want people to own firearms. Yeah. Um, but after we get them at that point, I kind of want to usher them away from a fearful mindset yeah. to a more prepared mindset. I don't want you just because you bought it because you was in a fearful place. Now let's elevate beyond yes. that. Let's yes. get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Let's learn, you know, let's be safety and let's have discipline when it comes to this. But now let's push forward and let's continue to grow and, you know, continue to just push this to all new heights. And so that's something that I'm definitely looking forward to looking forward to seeing you know i really like that you said that move beyond a fearful mindset right because yeah. that's not going to serve anybody no that's not no, going to serve anybody um and, and that's why i think sure michael and i are a big you know big proponent of having a good time on the range yes. safely yeah every yes. time we go on the range man we have a great time we push ourselves we compete we learn new things we yes. bring in subject matter experts and and in in hopes that people see the way we do that shamelessly mm -hmm. right we yeah, are not right. ashamed of showing that we've never done this before Absolutely. we've never shot this gun before we've never taken this training before and, yeah, and not we, at give, all. we give each other <laughs> we give each other crap it's actually i'm gonna be honest with you it's fun for me when i watch it back i'm like dude that was wild right yeah. and, and i think that, that a lot of people gravitate to that and, and, yeah. it, and it helps break down that barrier of, of fear of man i'm not going to be able to do this you know i'm not going to be able to do that the way they run those guns well guess what we weren't either at first when yeah, you took look a lot of practice if, if you look at our early training videos dude oh man tyler man. They, it, Listen, it was, it was bad a bro it was bad a long way, i got tyler. my early training videos too believe you me <laughs> we all start somewhere oh absolutely yeah. man um but you know what it's good to keep that stuff up though tyler to yeah. showcase oh, what's yeah, possible questions. to showcase yes, growth yes, yes, to yes, showcase so. you know what can be accomplished yeah. through the proper training and exactly. perseverance and dedication. 100%. Uh, because, you know, I think sometimes people look at individuals that they watch, mm -hmm. like, or follow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they say, man, this is this is beyond me. Like, I can't do this. Right. right. And right. we like to keep everything up. And we like to show when we miss shots, when we right. screw up, mm -hmm. to showcase, like, no, there is a process to it this. It is a yeah. very much a process. And that was... um. That was one big thing that came from me starting to do competition shooting. Uh, I had a lot of people who was watching me. I would always post my competitions. I'd always post my results no matter how far at the bottom of the list I mm -hmm. was or no matter how close I got to the number one spot, mm -hmm. I would always post you know, where I was in this. And so I think that was something that a lot of people respected from me mm -hmm. and that inspired a lot of people to actually go and start shooting competitions themselves because I got people, I went home to North Carolina recently mm -hmm. and I had a guy who came up to me and he was like, Hey man, congratulations on getting first place. Mm -hmm. He was saying, I'm proud of you, bro. You might not think it, but I've been watching you since the very beginning. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Somebody's a, always bro, watching. Somebody's bro. always we, watching. We say that all the time, yes. Tyler, that you yep. never know who's watching you. You never, you know. never know who's watching your content and, and, and really taking that journey with you, man. Exactly. So so again, that's just that's just more of a motivator to always put your best foot forward be as transparent as you possibly can and also always big. be authentic and yes. i think that that's the 
that's the component that was important in your journey is that authenticity of yes. showing like I'm just starting this and I'm not right. ashamed I, you know I don't want no one to think that I'm more than what I really am exactly. but you guess what you became more than yes. what you were when you started exactly. and that's why people can celebrate that man yep. everybody you know that's, that's like the underdog story right yes, sir. and everybody they love the everybody underdog. starts there everybody mm -hmm. starts there but you know some people are really aren't comfortable enough with themselves to accept that and accept that they're not the only one right and but they like to think so and yep. I think I'm the only one you know no you're not you're not you're you compare and, and it's that comparative mentality mm -hmm. comparing yourself to someone else you know it's okay to admire somebody it's okay right. to aspire to do things and be like someone or, or whatever or uh, attain their qualities yep. but at the end of the day you have to realize that there's a, probably about a million other people that is either in worse shape or the same shape as you is in absolutely. terms of that experience level. Yep. So, so I, I applaud you for that. I really do, man. I appreciate um, that. Because you, I, I feel like you definitely went above and beyond in showcasing that. Right. I appreciate that. I mean, All so Tyler, way. we got about two minutes left. Uh, for people who want to follow you, check out your content, where can they go? Absolutely. So all of my social media handles is Tyler Jamal Shoots. You can find me on Instagram, YouTube, find me over on Facebook. Um, my book is called Liberated by Faith. You can find that on Amazon, uh, or you can go over to my website, www.liberatingmethods.com. And it's just, you know, any of these things that I just named, you can find me, you can reach out, and uh, just stay tuned because we're looking forward to just doing a lot more for the world in general, you know, and being able to give back, especially in the two-way space, and to inspire, uplift, educate, and uh, continue to push forward. Well, look, man, I, I appreciate you for sharing your story, uh, your insights, and, and hopefully, John, someone out there listening to Tyler can say, I, too, can turn things around. Yeah. I, too, can yes. do things and, and move in a positive direction. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, I absolutely think that that's happened already with Tyler. And I think it's going to continue to happen. And I'm just, I'm just here to, I'm just here to watch, man. I'm, I'm very proud of you, brother. Because, like Thank I you. said, I, I met you. Earlier. I didn't even know when we had that first interview that you were in a dark place at the time because right. you were just so positive. Right. So, so it was very clear that you were being very proactive. Yes. in getting yourself out of that dark place. Yes. And I think that people should really take note of that. Absolutely. And you can do that. You can, you can get yourself out of a dark you place. Can. You don't have to stay there. It's you always have us, to be yes. deliberate. Yes. You have to be deliberate. Living with intent, something. just like he yes. says. That's right. Absolutely. I like that. Well, guys, this is the Go Beyond Podcast. And we're also, again, taping live for the Sure Michael Singleton Show live on Sirius XM Urban View, Channel 126. We're going to take another break, and we'll be right back after this.